It is the aspiration of every parent that their young ones would grow to become the best of their potential. Many of them strive to provide for their children, teaching them about life and helping them cross the bridges that appear shaky or too long. And as they grow, it is the dream of every young person that their future will be one of happiness, of offering solutions instead of being part of the problem, a life of building a legacy. That's what a perfect world looks like. When one is grown, the benefit of hindsight offers a unique opportunity to reflect on a journey or journeys of others. Tonight, I am moved by the young of this nation that have devoted their time, their energies, and their power to dream, to hard work. I think of the many motivational speeches they have received from their seniors, as they are promised of the fortunes ahead of them, should they keep the discipline, consistency, and most importantly, should they put their minds to their education. I think of the 18 million Kenyans that are in the country's education system, from the young boy and the young girl who just joined playgroup or is it baby class, all the way to those hoping to graduate from universities this year. They have done their part, but who are they, where, what are they getting out to? You see, the Kenyan population census of 2019 noted that 1.3 million Kenyans were jobless, majority of them the youth. Different sources put the youth unemployment at over 13%. They may sound like just numbers or complicated statistics that we sometimes like to brush off. It is not until you come face to face with unemployment. Now, this week I had a candid conversation with stakeholders in the health sector. We reflected on the more than 46,000 health professionals who are either underemployed or unemployed. We spoke of the more than 4,000 doctors, including dentists and pharmacists, who have no work to do. It was heartbreaking for Donald Galula to submit that he has since hung his lab coat after looking for work as a degree nurse became untenable. I hung my lab coat uh, two years ago, and I don't think I'm ready to go back to it. I'll give you to the experience right away from internship. During our year, we waited for eight months for us to be posted, and there are others even right now are waiting. We waited for five months to be paid. Working in KNH, um, during, the, during COVID time, um, I was managing around 36 patients. It's a huge burden. Now, today, the cost of funding higher education has taken a different trajectory. Government is reducing its contribution to financing education at universities. The burden is shifting to the students in the loans they will accumulate. Dr. Bethel Liber, the pharmacist who has not found any work for three years now, told me how his classmates, whose parents invested 2.3 million shillings since they were self-sponsored, are yet to find work to practice what they learned. Out of 75, only two that I know are in county governments, two employed by the government. The rest of us, uh, people have found different ways to cope up. So that is a wasted investment, literally. Luckily, Dr. Libea and Galula the Naz are not idle. Dr. Libea is into digital marketing. As he waits for the day, he will be reunited with his first love, pharmacy. Galula is into short-term consulting contracts. This too represents the millions of young people who still struggle to match their skills with the industry needs. We have a country that is struggling to find solutions, and not the effort by the government to invest in the affordable housing program, to create at least one million jobs every year, as the president says, in the construction sector. This, I must say, is an opportunity for some of the skilled and many of the semi-skilled or unskilled. But what of my two friends, Libea the pharmacist, Ongalula the nurse, or Josephine, the communication and public relations graduate? Should they learn something in the construction sector? If you visit a bread-making factory, you are likely to see stations where the input supplies are procured, then a station where the ingredients are mixed based on predetermined portions, the baking, the cooling, then packaging. But it doesn't end there. It extends to the market, the distribution, the sale, and eventually at the breakfast table of a happy family. We are doing well in baking the bread that is labor force. We even have 100% transition from primary to secondary schools as a policy. 
Currently, an estimated 500,000 students are in various academic years at universities. Another half a million are at Tibet institutions and colleges. Where will they go? Who is thinking about them? What are they doing? What are we doing about it? And that is my sense tonight.